Yeah. I could probably discuss that better because you've been saying me on throwing too thin. But when I threw the pots, a couple of them, but they seem to make you happy. Uh, I noticed when I was turning them that to me they felt heavy. Yeah. But, but they are certainly heavier thrown than what I would normally throw them. So, right. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you do, to get maximum stretching and texturing effect, you do need thick wool to start with. Uh, and then it's a matter of removing as much as you can from the bottom without losing the texture, obviously, the textured area. Yes. Well, I know, you know, they always say if there's any excess weight, it's always in the bottom. Yeah. Or generally always. Yes, that's funny because when I went down and she said, what did you, my wife said, well, what did you do? I said, well, Griggs says I'm throwing a bit too thin. And she laughed at me and she said, oh, I always reckon you throw too heavy. <laughs> so, uh, but then she's not a potter, no. although she's the head critic. But, uh, no. so, so before I put them on, I do just sort of visualise them and sort of just get a bit of a sense of the inside. Because and how heavy they are as well. Um, so this one's fairly straightforward. I'm just going to basically centre the side like you normally would. Nothing very complicated. <clears throat> and sometimes with some bowls, I actually run my finger around the bottom edge and just feel if that's running really true. If, in it, if it's really dipping down on one side, then I might try and just get a compromise between centering this and leveling that. Because what you don't want later is you've turned a pole and you know, <laughs> look at it, oh, it's a bit lopsided, it's a bit of uneven. So trying to sort of get the one. rim. <laughs> And even just checking these corners, they're running reasonably true. So that's going to be fairly critical, those corners. So I think that's about right. So again, now I just really rip off as much clay as I can fairly quickly and decide where the foot ring is going to go. Because I recycle all my clay, this what look, I operate a sort of a dual recycling system at home with my clay. One is that all these shavings just go straight into a bucket next to the wheel and it will go straight back through the pugna. Mm. I just sprinkle a bit of water on at the end of the day and as long as it's clean clay, it hasn't got rocks in it and stuff from something weird I'm doing, it's just my normal throwing clay. It all goes into the bucket, the bucket fills up, and then when I'm the next time I'm pugging clay, it just goes straight back through the pugna. I, I keep it soft with a bit of water, sometimes even a bit of a slip, keep a plastic bag over it. The rest of the stuff goes into a much bigger bin and that gets plunged, sieved, because I've got bits of sponges, throwing tools, all sorts of stuff <laughs> goes into it, you know, and it's a mixture of clay, you know. I, I I don't know what clay is in there sometimes. But to try and avoid the amount of sieving and blunging and drying out in clay trays that I have to do in the summer, I try and keep all this stuff from going through that system. And it just goes straight back through. You don't dry it out first, don't even dry it no, out first. No. No, this stuff it just goes straight in the bucket, yeah. a 20 litre, 40 litre bucket. Now, I do have to be a bit careful here because if I go down too far on this corner, I, will, I have gone through these corners occasionally. Um, but I do try and also go down enough to get rid of areas like that. But, you know, I, I have to be a bit, a bit careful. I found big wide buckets a bit hard to come by here. 
mate, me, I don't know why. Yeah. I, I used know. to be able to pick up those big red plastic buckets like the A. Yeah. And so deep at Kmart or somewhere. Fairly cheap. Yeah. And uh, even the plastics place in Albany didn't have any last right. time. Right. So I'm beginning to think that's about the size that I want my footprint to be. So um, what I'll do now, before I finally finish the outside, I'll go down in here and get an idea of how wide, the, how thick the base is inside. If I suddenly, if I'm suddenly going way down in here, much lower than there, then obviously I need to take more off there. You know? So I just, it'll give me a bit of a guide of how close I'm getting. That's too wrong. So that's pretty much right there in the middle now. Just do a final turn that I like the look of, and that's finished in there. So obviously I can take a tiny bit more off down here. stop and just press one of these areas and just see if they're starting to get a bit soft. If they are, I'm in trouble. Now there's a couple of things I have started to do a bit lately which I quite like. Um, one is that I often, um, they're just little extra things that I'm doing, but if I think I'm getting pretty close to the surface that I want, um, I'm not sure whether this is soft enough to do it, but we'll try. So I'll take the back of the turning tool, but you could take a rib, and I actually start to just get an edge that just goes over slightly and then I just soften it so I get a little beaded edge hanging down over the area there. Now something's happening just there, so I don't want to go too much further there. But I just it's just a little extra detail. Don't soften it too much. The other thing I can do up here, and I did it on one of the other bowls the other day, is get me back. <coughs> is to take this and get that sort of frayed and then I just tap that back to get that textured sort of frayed stressed clay look just there. And then if I'm dipping it in slip, dipping slip, I'll stop more or less at that line. So I've left that as bare clay and it's just got that slightly distressed sort of look, which I quite like. Um, I don't do it all the time. Then, uh, feckling knife. Now, what I could do, let me just think. Um, okay, so they're the, they're the sort of middle.
paint that this again. It's a little bit like an old carving knife. It's sort of it's well worn in. It's sort of very sharp um, and thin. Um, I'm just thinking for a second. Um, If I'm going to cut there, 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 I could, where's my, it's whether the foot that I cut that I'm going to try and just match it on one side or maybe just have it both ways. But what I could do is And again, just tear it off. And do I want to go down vertical, or do I want to sort of come at an angle, or do I do I want to sort of move it? But I think I'll keep this one just fairly plain. Now I like to go from wide into narrow, so I'll just start here and I'll go. Um, Then, do you want them quite as sharp as that? So, for example, sometimes I'll just go back down and just take away the sharpness a little bit, just soften the inside edges or the outer edges even. But the outer edges are not so, so bad, but just, just take a tiny little chamfer off each edge. And one thing I didn't do, I don't think, this one I don't, I don't actually think I turned the bottom, the actual foot ring base. I think I stopped before I got to that point and went on to other things. So then, and now just a really clean sponge. Just clean it all up. I'm just softening it. But I don't try and sort of, I don't try and sort of hide it too much. Just soften the sharp edges. Uh, oh, the other thing I do do sometimes, um, is uh, take a straight metal kidney, because at the moment I haven't got any shadow lines on those feet, so I take clean the edge of a kidney or a metal ruler or something, something that's fairly flat around the workshops, thin and flat, get my fettling knife, and then just put that there. Just to put a little bit of a shadow line on the edge of the foot. Yeah, of course I could. 
I could have done it if I chamfered it in the first place when I turned it. And now just a little bit of just cleaning up, just especially where those knife cuts went in. If I went a tiny bit deep, just close them back up again a little bit, seal them, just any sharp edges, just just soften them off. But not too much. I mean I don't want to lose the detail, but these edges just just soften them slightly so they're just not quite so sharp. Don't get a sponge and just completely plaster it with water and slip and stuff and get a get a, a, a sludgy mess. Just keep it pretty crisp still. Okay, done. Now take that off. And although there is a still a degree of robustness to it, um, you feel that now. Don't touch the base yet. It's not too bad. It's still not that hard. So there's still a bit of drying to go. Yeah, and in fact, there's not, a, not too bad now. And I like things that also have a degree of robustness and solidity to them. I'm not into really flimsy lightness. So uh, and the, the areas you've got to watch are those corners when you turn them. Uh, because you can, if you turn too much there, you can start to get um, too thin in the corners. I have had one or two of them. I've been a light for about a while, or I've just been so thin that you know, when you glaze it, you can see the dampness on the cap and stuff. But yeah, it's good.